Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Coffee Books and Rain. I'm Rachel and with me is actually Hedwig as we are talking a little bit about books as we do and no rain. Uh, actually the past couple days have been overcast and gloomy in the perfect ways. However, I woke up today we have a bit of a holiday today. It's federal holiday, so uh, my work is not open. And so I felt like reading a little pink. I have clip-in hair extensions in, which honestly, kind of not feeling today. They look okay right now, kind of from this angle, but they are not fully working for me. I think I need another pack of these in order to make them like full enough to wear kind of out and about the way I would like to. I have not decided yet if I want to go back to getting hair extensions yet. My hair is actually really pretty healthy right now. Um, and so depends on like when I bleach it and like the care I take, how long it's going to stay healthy. Um, because of course I do my own bleaching. We can see the roots are coming in. It is time to do the bleaching probably on Friday. So I've got a couple days. I do think I have my supplies. Anyway, we are talking about books. And if you notice a little bit of a change, uh, I do have a new camera. And so we are going to cross our fingers that the quality looks a little bit better. And we're going to go from here, see what we think. Leave a comment down below if the quality looks a little bit better, um, or if I should return it to Amazon. So, um, you guys let me know. You guys kind of can be the judge. Y'all are the audience. Uh, I am also going to try to create a couple of kind of maybe t-shirts or something that have like, you know, coffee books and rain, like the logo, but we shall see. Um, well, let us dive into the first book of today is called We Shall Be Monsters by Alicia, oh, Alyssa, sorry, Alyssa Wees, and that is W-E-E-S. And so I think we're going to put the book over here. I, I was originally thinking I might move it over here, but I'm kind of kind of out of the corner of my eye seeing where my like setting is. And I don't think we can move the book to this side. So we're going to keep it over here, although it's going to kind of cover up my background, especially when I switch over to Christmas. But We Shall Be Monsters by Alyssa Wees. And this book actually gave me some pretty good vibes of what I like to think of as kind of Naomi Novik and a little bit of kind of like a dark fairy tale. So I was pretty pleased with how it kind of rolled along in the terms of what was going on in the story. Again, if you came on the story looking for spoilers or if you came on this like channel looking for me to reveal anything. I do apologize. I am not that kind of channel. I am not here to spoil anything. I am here with the hopes that I can give you just a little bit of insight into what's happening in the book, a little bit more so than maybe Goodreads, and tell you what I think. Um, honestly, pretty good. I would say probably four, four and a half stars in my personal opinion. And let us dive in to the summary. Gemma lives with her mother in an isolated antique shop in Michigan, near a small patch of woods that conceals an enchanted gateway to fairyland. She knows she's not supposed to go into the woods. Her mother, Virginia, has warned her multiple times about the monsters that lurk there. And yet, defiantly, curiously, she goes anyway. Virginia understands her daughter's defiance. She knows the lure of the woods all too well. Her own mother warned her about the monsters that resided there, and she also did not listen. Until a witch cursed her true love, Ash, Gemma's father, into the form of a beast in the days before Gemma's birth. And if Virginia cannot break the curse before her daughter turns 15, Ash will eat Virginia's heart, and Gemma will belong to the witch. So, Virginia will do whatever she can to protect her daughter even if it means stealing Gemma's memories away. But everything changes when Gemma inadvertently gets too close to the truth, and the witch steals Virginia away instead. Now it is up to Gemma to venture deep into Feyland to try and rescue her mother and break the curse. 
told in alternating viewpoints between Gemma, Gemma and Virginia, this lyrical novel is not only a tale of a girl's fantastical quest through a darkly magical fairyland, but also an examination of the complex bond, goodness, bond of love and resentment that lies between parents and their children. So I'm not certain why the genre includes Halloween, because I definitely, there's no real Halloween vibe in this book. Definitely do consider kind of fairy tale, dark fairy tale, fantasy fiction, all that kind of resonates. Not even really sure if I truly place it into the adult realm. Um, there's not, I would actually probably more so put this into maybe a bit of YA. Um, just my personal perspective, I would probably put it a bit more YA. Um, again, that's just my thinking after having read, you know, quite a few books in my life. But if that's what they say, then that's what they say. Um, and so kind of going from there. Now, this book is expected publication of November 12th, 2024. So we'll try to get this episode out sometime around probably the 15th-ish, sometime around in there. I uh, can't guarantee exactly when it's going to fall onto the schedule, but um, we are rolling right along into November, and I cannot believe that we are that far along already. Um, but this book, I thought it was really well done, and, but it does... It's not confusing with the two perspectives. That's one thing I want to make note of. But I do feel like the two perspectives are constantly warring with each other. The It feels as though the mother and daughter never listen to each other. And I like to think that at least growing up or at some point in my life, my mom and I have had some pretty good conversations. Um, now, of course, now uh, <laughs> my father did not turn into a beast and have to go live into the woods. So I'm fairly certain that is a, um, a completely different situation for Virginia. But I don't really understand Virginia's plan to steal her daughter's memories away. We do kind of learn a little bit later on in the book and actually towards the end of the book why she felt like she needed to do it. And I don't feel like that's too much of a spoiler, so I guess I can dive into that a little bit. But So Jim's own mother would, would trade with the fairies. Um, and her mother was not magical, but she would trade antique items. This is where the antique store kind of came from. Um, and so her mother, the grandmother, um, would trade antique items with the fairies. Well, the fairies, I guess, in some way, thought they may be magical in some sort of respect. Well, um, they were not, but in... I don't know. Uh, there was some sort of like thought in their mind that they were. And one day the grandmother stopped because uh, she had fallen in love with like one of the other, um, I guess, females of the court. And I'm going to kind of leave that there. So uh, you guys can read along or read the book to find out exactly how that all goes down. But the grandmother stopped going to court and stopped going to the Fae to trade. And so then Virginia, um, through her mother, it's kind of put the fear of the Fae into Virginia. So that's Gemma's mom. And now Virginia, she's got this kind of fear, curiosity of the Fae of the forest. Well, then, of course, she falls in love with Ash. And it's kind of hard for me to kind of, like... I do think Ash has magical powers. If we kind of trust his lineage, his heritage, it does sound as though he has some magic in him um, based upon his his own kind of siring, so to speak. But um, 
Ash falls in love with Virginia. They, um, I guess, make a, a mess of things, so to speak. <laughs> Ash is turned into a beast. Virginia gets this curse placed on her by the Silt Witch. And so now the child that Virginia carries has to bear the burden of this curse. If Virginia cannot find this particular mirror that will show this um, will show the beast pretty much Ash his true nature, which is kind of his human form, that um, that would break the curse, or otherwise Gemma must, like Gemma must go with the witch, and Ash will eat Virginia's heart. It's a whole big thing. And so it's just kind of, like, there's a lot, like, at stake in this particular book. And Jim is pretty innocent because she was not even yet born when all of this goes down. So she comes along, and then her mom has this hairbrush that she had gotten from actually, um, I want to say she stole it from Ash's mom. And... This brush is supposed to trap your memories. Well, that's what Virginia uses to wipe away Gemma's memories of going into the woods and stuff. She thinks if Gemma can't remember visiting the fairies or visiting the woods, that she's not going to be curious about it. But the thing is, is Gemma is curious every day about these woods and about the fairies and all of that. So the curiosity never goes away. And so Gemma is constantly curious about this sort of thing. And so her mom is doing no good by taking her memories and wiping them each night. Um, so that's where I say like these two stories of the mother and the daughter, as we're kind of getting both sides of the story, they're almost at odds with each other. Like these two have never fully had good conversations with each other. They have never had any sort of really good dialogue. And I even wonder if the grandmother and the mother um, have had some good conversations either, because I just feel like a lot of this could have been avoided had, um, had conversations actually like played out appropriately. And that's just kind of my thinkings. And that's why I guess I don't give it as high of stars as I wish I could. Because I love dark fairy tales. I love kind of being able to get into the vibe of like Naomi Novik and kind of that whole realm. But it kind of pulls me out of it when I feel like we're missing a piece. Like we throw a 15 year old into the woods to save her parents pretty much. And we don't, she's literally completely unequipped with no conversation of any kind. Like she has to do everything alone. Grandma's also like missing at this particular time. So she can't really even have a conversation with grandma. And that's why I kind of say it's also a little YA in my personal opinion as well, is our main protagonist is a 15 year old. She is not yet really come of age at all. And is there romance? No, not really. Uh, well, it, it is between, I guess, Virginia and Ash, but I think that has to happen in order for Virginia or for Gemma to come along. So, I mean, in a way, yes, but in a way, no. But, I mean, they're like the parents. So, um, yes and no, but I wouldn't call this fantasy romance in like in that sort of way because you're not really questioning will they get together because they kind of already do and they kind of already make a child. So, <laughs> um, you'll have to read it to find out what happens in the end, how everything plays out. Again, I am probably... Like, again, I wish Goodreads let me give partial stars. I would probably go ahead and give this a 2.5 to 2, a 4, uh, not a 4.5, 4 4.25 or a 4.5. I don't, well, I don't think I can round it up to a 5. Um, I do think I'll recommend it to people who are looking for kind of a dark fairy tale. 
And I do think I will probably try to explore more by this author if I can find more by this author. But with all of that being said, if it sounds like it's up your alley, I hope you'll go out and find it. If it doesn't, that's okay. Some books are not made for everyone. And I don't think anything is made for everyone. I think everything has its own audience and that's okay. So if this is for you, awesome. I hope you'll go find it. If not, we'll keep looking and hopefully we'll find something that is for you. But until next time, thank you so much for joining us on this journey. I hope we will see you on the next page and I hope you have a great one. Oh, and like and subscribe and help me please keep growing this channel. I do plan on so my Books Are Magical podcast, just by the way, and as an aside, my Books Are Magical podcast had taken, had taken a bit of a break as the co-hosts that I had previously had have just had life happening. Um, I am currently planning on reinvigorating that and reviving it. Um, I do not currently have co-hosts lined up. And I feel as though a podcast really works best with at least one other co-host. So I am kind of planning on that, but working on it. I hope to have some new episodes, if not by the end of this year on Books Are Magical, then I hope by the beginning of next year where we can start also having conversations on the podcast as well. I would love to know your thoughts. The podcast email is books or magical pod, books or magical podcast at gmail.com. And if you would like to email me for this channel, then my little like card at the end of this email is, or at the end of this episode, my goodness, is also available for you to check out and email me there. So thank you so much. I will see you guys later.